My coach, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Mark. Hope everybody's doing well. Have a happy holiday season. As to you, please uh, fire away when ready. Thank you, Mark. We, uh, we're giving the guys off from uh, this morning until Christmas night when they arrive in Charlotte. Uh, we've had uh, really good preparation. We've gotten a lot of work with the younger ones and that's been fun to prepare them for spring practice and let them start competing for jobs. So it's, it's been uh, fun to watch them. We actually scrimmaged the younger ones this morning and had the coaches uh, step out of the way and the older players coach their position. So that was fun. We had about 16 play scrimmage at the end here. That was uh, a lot of fun to watch. And then I could yell at the players like I yell at the coaches so that, that the coaches enjoyed watching me say, come on, Sam Howell, come on, coach Howell, get them back, man. If they're, they're too close to the line. So, uh, so that was, that was fun. Uh, but our guys will report um, on Christmas day uh, for dinner. So they will be at home. Uh, we, we wanted to be at their own place for Christmas so they can enjoy their families. And, um, and then they'll all show up in, in Charlotte that night. Um, but practice has been good. We, we always have a, a really tough bowl practice at home. And then when we get to Charlotte, it'll be all about South Carolina. It's been a lot about young players uh, since we've been here. Everybody stayed healthy. Uh, we haven't lost a, a player uh, in our preparation uh, that will not play in the ball game to this point. So, so that uh, that's good. When you get to Charlotte, like we said, it's uh, we'll, we'll practice on uh, Sunday. Uh, it'll be very, very much like the, the practice for the Pittsburgh game because you start on Sunday and you play on Thursday. So it's a very short week after you get down there, but uh, um, our guys are used to that. So uh, they should be able to handle that well. I've talked to the guys a lot about uh, um, everybody says it's a disappointing year. When you go back and study our history, the only time we've had three or more uh, winning seasons in a row since I left was 2010, 11, 12, and 13. And um, we won four in a row. Uh, this would be a chance with a win for the first time other than that since I left for us to have three winning seasons in a row and go to three bowls in a row. So I want our guys to have their head up. I want to be proud. Uh, we're making tremendous progress. Um, we, we could have done some things better. We've talked enough about that to, to know we didn't start well offensively at, at uh, Virginia Tech. We didn't play well as a team at Georgia Tech. Um, we didn't play well on defense against Florida State. We had a great chance to beat Pitt. We had a great chance to beat State. Um, but it is what it is. And, and those are things that we've got to improve. Uh, we don't give ourselves credit for the great wins that we had this year over a top 10 Wake Forest and a Virginia team that was undefeated when they came in and, and, and running up and down the field against everybody. Um, so, so there are a lot of uh, a Miami team that ended up uh, being about as good as anybody in our league. Uh, so a lot of great things happened this year, and I'm, I'm proud of these guys for sure. Um, when you start looking at South Carolina, uh, they've got seven seniors starting on defense. Um, and, and, uh, they're 13th in the country and, and, um, turnovers gained and, and that's the way you win football games. Uh, they've done a tremendous job in that area. They've got 15 interceptions and that ranks 10th nationally. So their secondary is really, really good and confident. Um, and, and, uh, Kevin Harris is a, a really, really good running back. They got a big, strong offensive line. Uh, they've changed up quarterbacks throughout the year. Uh, but I'm, I'm really proud of uh, Shane Beamer. Uh, he is, uh, he's a superstar happening. Um, I'm proud because I watched his, his dad and mom raise him. Uh, they're tremendous people. He's got a great consultant in, in Frank. And I think I said this last time, but this will be the first time that I have ever coached against a father as a head coach and then coached against his son as a head coach too. So uh, that means you've been doing this a long, long time. I got a, some guys on the team that I coached their dads and now I'm coaching the sons but I've never coached against a, a, a father and a son. Uh, so that, that just moves it forward. Uh, COVID is obviously very aggressive right now. Uh, we're, we're looking at new protocols and, and going back to um, the, the same way we were last year when we get to the bowl game. We're, we're gonna spread out to eat. We're gonna spread out for our meetings. Uh, this stuff is, uh, it's, it's doubling really fast. Um, it's obviously canceling and postponing practices and games across the country. I told our guys, we've really had one guy in two years that's missed a game because of COVID. 
Um, so our guys have handled it so well. Uh, so when you go home, uh, be smart. Be smart around your friends, wear your mask, take care of yourself. You, you don't want to bring it back to uh, the team uh, because it spreads so fast. You could, you could obviously have a game canceled. So uh, they're fully aware of that. Coaches as well. We've, uh, we, we've been doing some cross training like we did last year to make sure we've got enough depth to play the game. And at the same time, uh, we have a, a replacement coach for every coach on our staff, including me. Because if I can't go or Coach Longo or Bateman can't go, uh, somebody's got to step up and, and take their jobs for them because they just can't be there. So uh, it's a different time and a different world, but uh, we've got to be prepared for everything. Um, questions? Our first question today will come from Dina King. Go ahead, Dina. Hey, Coach. Um, Coach Longo said Monday that you had 22 signees there. Just wanting a little update on them. I know – Connor Harrell, Bo Atkinson, and Travion Greens there. Uh, how, how are they adjusting to uh, being on the college campus, and who else do you expect to, to be on campus during this bowl, uh, early bowl practice? Yeah, Dean, I'm sorry. I should have mentioned it. That, that's a, a great point. Uh, the NCAA says if you are coming in early and if you have graduated – and you get an email from your high school that says you have completed all your work, all your grades are in, then you can come and only practice on the campus for the bowl. You can't get bowl gifts and you cannot go to the bowl site. So we've had uh, uh, Travion Green, uh, we've had Bo Atkinson, and we've had Connor Harrell here since Sunday. So, um, and then they have to be two days in shorts and then three days in shells and then they can go full pads. So uh, Bo's had a sore ankle and Connor had a sore ankle in their playoff games. Um, Travion Green actually practiced in, in shells today. So it was good for him. And then uh, Malachi Henry came yesterday and he was able to practice today, even though he was in shorts while the rest of the guys were, were in pads. So um, I, I asked each one of them, Dana, and they said it was a wonderful experience. I, I think what it'll help them do, it gets them a physical, it gets them in the meetings with their, their other teammates and coaches. It lets them, they've seen practice, but they're actually involved. So they see the speed of the game. Uh, they get to move into their dorm room and get to move all their stuff in that they'll be bringing back in January. So more than anything else, I think it just kind of helps settle some of the anxiety they'll have before they come back in January. But I, I think it's a really, really good idea uh, for the guys to come in and just get a feel. It's just hard for them to graduate early enough to, to come to practice. Thank you. Thank you. Michael Cove. Hey, Coach. Uh, I wanted to ask you about uh, Corey Gaynor coming in from Miami. I know you said that you would be looking at positions of need in the transfer portal. Obviously, offensive line uh, had some issues this season. What do you think uh, Corey is going to bring to the team uh, this year – or next year, excuse me? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, this year, next year, Michael, next week in January, it's just crazy with this transfer portal. Um, Michael, it's a good question. People have talked so much about our offensive line. It, it's been missed that we led the ACC in rushing and we rushed for about 220 yards a game. So these guys did a lot of great things. The, the thing that's been obvious is we've had entirely too many sacks and, and those for a lot of different reasons. I, I wouldn't coach offensive line. Because if anything happens bad on offense, it's the offensive line's fault. And, and they want the offensive line coach fired. Uh, um, so uh, might be the running back protection, might be the tight end, might be a call by the center, not all of them. It might be the quarterback held it too long, um, might be a, a bad check uh, by the quarterback. Uh, so maybe nobody's open. Uh, so there are a lot of different reasons that you have it. Um, we've only taken one grad transfer. And that was Ty Chandler, and it worked out really well. So when we took Corey Gaynor, uh, who Stacy recruited at Miami, and uh, Coach Searles, our offensive line coach, and he coached him at guard. He started as a freshman, and he's been a captain for them. So we explained to our team why we're looking for a, a grad transfer and why you would bring them in, because it could be disruptive to your, to your locker room. And uh, we told uh, Kieran Johnson, and we told Brian Anderson, um, who, who are centers, uh, Caden Baker's a young guy trying to work at center some that, uh, uh, Brian was not healthy all year. He had a procedure in, in preseason 
uh, Curion gets his uh, high ankle sprain uh, in the first quarter of the Virginia Tech game, we don't have a center. So we go from having depth at center to none. And, and Q had been playing a lot more guard than, than center. And then uh, for Duke, we had to move Caden Baker in and, and let him play. He never played center a, a down in, in his life. So we told the guys, uh, bringing uh, a guy like Corey in who's older, uh, he's a center and a guard. He's used to playing in this league. He's a captain, so he gives us immediate leadership in that group. Um, and it also gives us depth, that guard and center, which we need. And, and we've got it. We're, we're constantly pushing, playing more players. So the other message is that if you bring in a grad transfer at your position, maybe you're not old enough to play well yet. Maybe you haven't stepped up and aren't strong enough yet. Maybe you're not consistent enough yet. Maybe you're not good enough in your position. So those are facts. Uh, and our job is to win games. And, and we've got to do whatever we can do within the rule to win games. And uh, we've got to have more consistent play um, in the interior of our line. And we felt like Corey gives us a, a step forward in doing that. And, and it'll also help the other guys play harder. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. And Andrew Jones. Hey, Coach, going back to what you were saying about getting the young guys a lot of work this month, uh, has it really been like an extra spring practice for that group of kids? And, and how, how extensive has the work been that they've gotten, not just in the scrimmage today, but in regular daily reps, either the physical stuff or the skill stuff? We, Andrew, we've worked them every day. And, and we've been really, really physical. We've been more physical in bowl practice than we've been since we've been here. And we just felt like that that was really, really important, and especially in the lines of scrimmage. Uh, we're, we're thin some in the secondary. We've lost some guys there, so you, you have to be careful. Um, like some of the backs are banged up a little bit. But those lines of scrimmage have been absolutely game speed uh, for, for every practice that, that we've been involved with. And, and we'll end up, I think, with 14 practices. Um, and that's as much or, or more in pads then we'll have this spring. So even our, our 16 play scrimmage at the end there, our coaches will grade that this afternoon and, and it'll, it'll help them make decisions. Even if we are looking at a grad transfer, do you feel like this freshman's going to make enough progress or do you bring a grad transfer in uh, maybe in June if you don't see his progress through bowl practice and spring practice? Uh, so, and, and guys can leave now. After spring practice, I think there's about a week window that after spring practice guys can leave. So there, there's probably going to be another group of transfer portal guys across college football after the bowl games. Some are waiting. They want to be with their team for the bowl. Some are waiting because they want to get bowl gifts and the, and the money. Um, some may not be happy with, with how much they play in the bowl game. So there will be another rush right after the bowl game. Um, and and Everybody's watching the transfer portal every night, uh, every day, you, every bowl game I watch now. Yeah, he transferred from, he transferred from, it's just crazy what, what's happening. Um, and then after spring practice, I think we'll see another, um, another group of transfers because they didn't, they, they weren't happy in spring practice. Um, so roster management is very, very difficult, Andrew, because you gotta, you've got to look at everything. Do you hold two? for the end of spring practice? Or do you think you'll have two more leave and then you can bring two more in to replace those two? Um, so we felt like that we needed to be really, really aggressive in this bowl practice so we'd have a better idea of some of these guys for spring. So this was more so than how you guys handled things before the Orange Bowl last year. And it's, it's about evaluation and it's about getting in the extra time for guys like Keyshawn who maybe needed the more, more of the reps. Is that the balance there? Yes, the, the, the difference is it's not, it's not tougher, but what we did is, is we took the gloves off with the two lines of scrimmage and said, play. No staying up, you, you can cut, it's full speed. So when we had gear, full gear on, we, we scrimmaged with lines of scrimmage and we hadn't been doing that. And, 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 and that'll help us. We've got to do a better job of, of uh, being stout and stopping the run up front on defense. And we've got to do a better job. We, we did a great job running the ball most of the time, but we can't have a game where we rush for 88 yards. Uh, we've, we've got to do a better job 
of running the ball in those late down situations. Like we said, we could have finished the state game if we'd stayed on the field. We, we could have made Miami where it wasn't close if we'd stayed on the field offensively. Um, you, you've got to stop the, the other team when they're running the ball late in the game and you're trying to get off the field. So we just feel like that we've got to be more aggressive in both those lines of scrimmage. And that's the first time I've, I've done that in a long time. If you look at, at where this program is, and we just said we, we haven't been consistently good for a long time, a long time. Nobody wants to talk about it, but it's facts. Um, and, and again, four winning seasons is the, the most we've had uh, consistently. We haven't had three in a row um, since 97. So we, we came in and we were bad and, and could have won nine that year, which would have been unbelievable, been awful because we'd won that many. Everybody would have expected this year, last year. Uh, and then we win eight the next year and go to the Orange Bowl and have a chance to beat number five in the country without four of your best players. Uh, and then we go back to, to six with a chance to have a third straight winning season, which would be the second time since 97 ever. And we're disappointed. So our problem is now we've gone from bad to a little above middle, back to middle, and we need to take the next step going forward. So we, we have to change some things um, to, to make sure we take that next step. And that's what we're trying to do. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Patrick Welter, go ahead. Coach, uh, after this game, a lot of the focus on Sam Howell is going to turn to the NFL draft. Um, so I'm curious how much of his, the mental side of his game, you know, pre-snap, you know, in college, a lot of it is, you know, check with me, you know, look over the OC. Like how much of that he's doing in college do you think will translate to the NFL? Uh, I think a lot, Patrick. Um, uh, I, I do think Sam will be a tremendous player in the NFL. He's got outstanding ability. And, and one of the things I like that Phil Longo does is in the offseason, uh, he and our quarterback study the NFL. And they look at things that, that are relevant that we can use from the NFL in college football. And at the same time, um, it, it helps them get, get more prepared for the next level. So we've got Coach Moody in here to tell the guys what they need to be doing because he was a 19-year scout. And Daryl does a tremendous job of, of saying, come here, that they're, they're not going to like this, that you're, they're, they're going to grade you down for this. This isn't going to fly in the combine. If you want to play, here's where the scouts are telling me you've got to get better. And then Phil and, and Jay – take our defensive guys and they show them a lot of things about the NFL on both sides of the ball, where they would fit and how they would fit and, and how they need to do it. Uh, so I think that uh, uh, Sam will be very, very well prepared for the NFL. If I could follow up real quick, um, have you come up with a detailed plan of how much he will play in this game, just given the fact that you maybe need to start preparing for the future and potentially just protect his status? Uh, Patrick, we prepared for the future against Wofford. So that was it. We, we are going to Charlotte to do everything within our power to try to win. And, and that's the only thing that's important. It, we're, we're focused on winning. We want to have the third straight winning season. We want to take momentum. We took momentum in recruiting. We want to take momentum into spring practice. And, and we don't want to be six and six anymore. We, we want to be better than that. Brian Estridge, go ahead. Good to see you again. The um, Real quick, you talked about how you'll start to zone in on South Carolina once you get to Charlotte, but have you already identified a couple of things that teams have been able to exploit this year that will help your group be successful against them in this bowl game? Well, Brian, we, we worked exclusively against each other early in bowl practice, and then the last four or five days, we, we've worked against South Carolina every day. So just pieces. So we'd have our working against each other uh, to, to try to evaluate guys, and then we would go game plan. So, so we have a full game plan in against South Carolina. We've been working on for five days, and then we'll have four or five more practices when we get to Charlotte to, to just uh, uh, tone it up. See <clears throat> Brown. Hey, Mac, I, I wanted to get a little bit more background on British Brooks uh, from you, kind of his story. Um, did he come to school uh, as a preferred walk-on or somebody that you guys knew about, or was he somebody who literally 
bet on himself and came out to came and solicited, you know, you guys to play. See, so, yeah, we would have to ask people who have been here because he came with Coach Fedora, but he was a, a good player. Um, so I would think that he was a preferred walk on that they recruited. We, we've, uh, we, like I said, we had our, our players coach, the older players coach, the younger players today. Uh, we've also every day we're taking two, uh, guys on our team and we're pulling up their high school video, a highlight film, and we're showing it to the team <clears throat> and we're asking the team to identify who they are. Well, they're cheating some because they, they look at the logo in the middle of the field. They know where they're from. Uh, and we were only doing seniors. Well, that's too easy. We don't have many seniors playing. So then we did everybody. So they did British this morning and it didn't take very long. Uh, it's amazing how the guys in high school look the same four years later. They've got the same mannerisms. They score, they do the same stuff. They, uh, so they all were screaming British. We had uh, Jeremiah Gimmel this morning and we even tried to fool him. We put him at tight end first but he caught a ball and they watched him run. They said, that's Gimmel, man. So, so they are uh, seven and one for picking guys. Uh, they, they didn't figure out who Brian Anderson was. And that's because he was playing guard and tackle and, and they, it fooled them because it was a different position. Uh, but uh, British has, has been a story for every young guy out there that's overlooked. Um, I would think, and I can find out for you. See, I'll, I'll get Jeremy to, to call your text you. I'll find out when we go to lunch, but uh, I would think that uh, he was a preferred walk on. That was really a good high school player that wanted to come here. And do you, do you believe that, you know, the success he had here late in the season at running back um, is something that, you know, it's, it's not just a one shot kind of deal. Like that's something that could, could carry over into next year and he'd be uh, a real part of the rotation. Yes, one of the major reasons we wanted him back was leadership. <clears throat> we get through with practice yesterday, and I look over, and the entire offensive team is around British, and he's talking to them about work ethic, and, and so we've missed that. We had that with Michael Carter last year. He was a very vocal leader, and, and he stirred them all up, and now British does that with special teams, and I can see British doing that with, with offense. I also think what we saw against Wofford – uh, and the confidence he gained against State will be what we see next year. And I think he can be really good. And I, and I go back, CL, I'm sorry. I, I go back to the NC State game. Uh, we tried hard to get him off special teams, and he knew we were struggling some, so he refused to come out of the game as he was playing every snap on, on offense. So that's just – that's the kind of person he is uh, with great worth ethic and tremendous leadership. And he'll be a real asset to this team coming back. Very unselfish. Ross Martin, go ahead. Hey, Coach Brown. Um, when y'all get to Charlotte, I have a couple of questions. Like, where are y'all? Where are y'all practicing? What, what does that kind of look like? And are there some things, some bowl-related activities y'all are doing? Um, I don't know. You know, in different cities, you do different types of things. Can you kind of get into that? A little, little light question there for you. Yes, uh, Ross. But what happened to you? That, that's just this in your norm. You, you're the Christmas spirit, I think. That that's what it must be. Now, Ross, it, it, again, it's a good question. Can, uh, can Jeremy? Can you send the guys the schedules? We'll just have Jeremy send you the the things that the guys can do. I think they shop one day and and they go to the uh, racetrack one day, and I think they actually ride in a race car, which I've been told is really really cool. Um, so there's a, a few things like that they do. I think there's a charity event. Um, and, and Ross, the other thing we're all looking at right now is, is which of these events can we do with the COVID protocols? Because everybody's looking at what do we do to have the game? So I think the, the racetrack will be fine. They can wear their, their mask while they're, they're out shopping. Um, so, so that'll be good. We're practicing at Providence Day. Uh, so that's where we will, we will be. Uh, we, we like to practice in the morning because the game's there, I think, because a couple of the events, we're practicing some at 145. Um, so the practice times will move around. The practices will be closed. Uh, but uh, I can get Jeremy to get you you all all of that as soon as we, we get off here. And then one thing that's kind of made its rounds on the internet is, is you and Coach Beamer agreeing to a uh, mayonnaise dump <laughs> for the winter. I don't know your thoughts on that. Um, 
you know, maybe how you're preparing for a bunch of mayonnaise on your head? We need to win. Uh, I, I said on somewhere that I'd let somebody hit me 365 days with a frying pan right in the face if we won. So mayonnaise is easy. <laughs> I don't care. Uh, I don't even know what it means. I haven't, I haven't Googled it. I haven't pulled it up. But I'm so happy when we win, I probably won't even realize whatever's happening is happening. Uh, Gregory Hall, go ahead. Mac, during these bowl practices, um, you mentioned trying to like evaluate the younger guys for the spring. Who stood out um, specifically during that 16 place scrimmage as far as maybe some freshmen that haven't gotten a lot of burn during the season, but you've tried to really try to evaluate at full speed. Just who stood out to you? What have you seen out of those guys? Yeah, Greg, let me think about it. Jeremy was watching it too. He could go, we just got through. But Ross, the other thing is the 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 key is not the the mayonnaise, very honestly. It's ten thousand dollars for a charity. So Shane and I would be so fortunate. How in the world could you turn down ten thousand dollars for a charity that you care about? Um, so that that's why you do it. It has nothing to do with all the celebration. I, I appreciate the uh, uh, Duke's Mayo Bowl giving ten thousand dollars to a charity because at this time they really need it. So that that's why that's why you do it without question. Uh, Gregory, with uh, I saw Dante Belfour. Uh, make a play or two today. I thought he's getting better. Uh, Tamir Brown uh, showed great speed in the kicking game, but and I'll miss some guys here, but he and Dontavius Nash uh, both flashed some uh, in bowl practice. Um, <clears throat> the young linebackers keep getting better, but they, they played. You know, so many of our young guys played. I thought uh, Keyshawn Silver uh, really made some progress uh, because he – uh, uh, he got his knee hurt. He got an ankle hurt. He got his knee hurt. And then he got heavier and he's got his weight down now. So he really made some progress in, um, in our bowl practice. Uh, Jeremy, you can help me with, um, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, on, on offense, um, Camaro Edmonds and Elijah green did some good things. Um, Kobe Pesor made a really good catch and, and run today on a screen. Um, JJ Jones keeps getting better, uh, with what he's doing. So I think those are probably the guys without, without spending a lot of time thinking about it, um, that, that, uh, that have just kind of popped out. And then I know you mentioned multiple times, just the intent on winning against South Carolina and that be the ultimate goal with Sam Howell playing and not really worrying about the future, but how do you is there going to be a concerted effort to get some of those guys in more or will it just be normal game planning as far as the 22 starters are going to play and then we rotate in depth wise as normal? Greg, it will be a hundred percent what we need to do to win the game. Period. We, we, we are not, I'm not thinking about rotation or anything now uh, by next year. I'm really trying to, to get us through spring practice where we could put a complete second group in uh, every third series something like that so we can force more substitution. Uh, we had some substitution issues this year with our defensive line because you're trying to rush them in. If they're not substituting now, people are good. Our offense even, they're going to snap the ball while you're running on and off the field and, and catch it. So I think it's better to plan substitution and just have it before the snap of the ball, not during the series because it's hard to get your guys off the field um, but, but we're, we're not worried about that now. We, we need a, a sixth winning season. Uh, we need a bowl win. Uh, every year you need to win your last game, whatever it is, because it, it carries over for a year. And it, it's, uh, it's, it's on everybody's mind till, till next August. Uh, I either watch, this sounds foolish, and Sally laughs at me, I either watch or record and watch every bowl game. And, and to see these six and six teams win, uh, whether it was uh, yesterday's game with Wyoming and Kent State, um, or last night's game with UTSA and, and uh, San Diego State, I watch every snap. And the winning team is so excited and they're so happy. So, so don't tell me it doesn't matter to, to win at any time, but especially uh, to win your last game. When, when do you have time to watch 44 bowl games, Mac? I, I do it at night because we practice in the morning. So Sally goes and watches her shows and I watch my games. And she said, you may be the only one watching that game. That's not a family member. And I said, that's fine. I, I got it. 
because I learn. I, I, she watches HGTV because she loves houses. I don't. I watch football. And I don't watch pro football unless I want to see one of our players. I watch college football. So I get through my work. I go home. I'll probably have two games recorded, Greg. And I'm either on a Zoom with a recruit or I'm watching a recorded game. And I, I love them recorded. And I don't want to hurt the advertiser's feelings, but I can run through real quickly. So, and usually if it gets totally out of hand, I will skip the fourth quarter and go to the next game. But, but I, I love watching football. All right, we'll close up today uh, with uh, one more question from Brian Estridge. Can you, uh, can you put in perspective for folks who don't live in the region? I know you don't play every year anymore, but does this still feel like a rivalry, uh, the emotion of this game? Give, give us some perspective on that. Absolutely, Brian. It's, uh, uh, it's, uh, I'm, I'm used to um, Texas and Oklahoma. That, that uh, border rivalry matters. And it's the Carolinas, and, and both like to use Carolina football. And um, each one thinks the other one's foolish uh, when they do it. I, when I first got here, I called Joe Morrison, who we lost. I, I called his office to ask something, and his assistant said Carolina football. And I said, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. You're, you're, we're Carolina football. So she and I got in an argument. I didn't know who she was. Uh, but that was uh, my first game when I was here was uh, in Columbia against South Carolina. Our first game back was in Charlotte against South Carolina. Uh, it's fitting that with Sam making a decision after the game and these seniors, it was the start of, of this senior group. It'll be the end of the senior group. And then Brian, I think we play in Charlotte in two years. So it, it, uh, it's a, a series that's been very, very good. I hope it looks like the weather's great. I hope there's a tremendous crowd uh, and it should be a, a fun game. All right, that's all we have for you today, Coach. We appreciate your time. Thank you, Mark. Everybody have a, a Merry Christmas and a happy holiday season. And, uh, and again, let's, let's all start taking care of each other again. I never thought we'd be sitting here talking about masks. Uh, I thought we were through this summer, but we're, we're obviously not. So let's make sure we, we stay safe. You all travel safe, and we'll see you in Charlotte. Thanks, Coach. Great, thanks.